Hey everyone, this is Imi Chicken, and we're on the streets of Shinjuku. Shinjuku in Tokyo, Japan, is known as the second center of the city. And rather than come and enjoy the cuisine, we've met up with some friends to find the best arcades in Tokyo. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. When people visit Japan, the arcades that are easiest to find are the larger ones, and they usually house UFO catchers, rhythm games, and purikua. There's also pachinko and patchy slot machines, but in today's video, we're going to find some gems. We'll first meet up with Tijin, who makes some pretty sweet reviews regarding some lesser known games. And the first place we're going to go to is Super Potato in Akihabara. This place in Akihabara is a used store for retro games, and it's quite rare for them not to have the product you're looking for. But if you live in Japan, there's one big reason not to go here, and it's the price. Everything here is marked up, and it feels more like a museum than anything else. But if you go upstairs, there's like a super secret arcade up here. There's plenty of snacks, and a nice selection of arcade games. Oh, this one's a good one. One of our favorites, Dudon Patch. Bit of an issue with the monitor, but yeah, it is what it is. Oh, this game here has style. But it plays like crap. <laughs> nice stick. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Game Boy, and more Sega cabinets, Blast Cities, and Astro Cities. And then me and Tijin had a brawl. Was a ton of fun hanging out in Tokyo together. If you like video game music, check my stuff out as well. Otherwise, mm, don't. Last year, we actually met up with JB from the Gum Forever of Fame. We ate chicken, had a few drinks, and he was a super nice guy. He also introduced us to a great arcade, which had older patchy slots and many amazing games from the 90s. Unfortunately, most of the footage we took was not the best, so again we tried to find that holy grail. Here's the photo I took of it, and it's called the Mikado Game Center. There are two in the area, and we're first going to check out the one in Takanorubababa. After a walk and a train ride, I managed to get close and meet it with a friend. This is uh, Don yeah. from RX Nemesis. Yes. Yeah, we do uh, mainly like designer soft be like you think like old school uh, Godzilla, like the big plasticky rubbery things. Unlike like most designers, like most people that are taking existing IPs, like we're making our own comics, making our own stories. So like our characters have like an actual story to them. So I started off like translating, got into project management, did a bit of scenario writing for some Sega titles, Ooh. localization manager for uh, Brave XPS. There's another tactics one, another mobile title Brave Frontier as an IP manager I pulled in like Samurai Champloo, Try Gun, things like that. Like I was uh, the one like wheeling and dealing those uh, those contracts. Favorite video game? Kid Generation DuckTales for NES. That's always the first game I play. If I play in an uh, emulator or whatever that's the first game I play all the time. More modern gaming. Robot Alchemic Drive for PS2. It's like the most insane robotic control scheme. Like you have this character that can control robots, but you have to move the character in sight, line sight of your character, and then you control your character like a remote control car. It's amazing. Favorite game that's overlooked or hated by others? Tempo for the 32X. It is hated on. It is just a simple kidsy music based platformer. You throw like music notes and it's got these cheesy rap songs to back it up. What's your favorite arcade game? Oh, favorite all time would have to be uh, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh. Yeah, the original TMNT. If I go to arcades now, is any of the initial Ds. I used to drift a little bit here in Japan and in the States. And even though it's arcadey, it's still fun. And this game center in Tarararababa was indeed. The Holy Grail. And for the first time we could experience Outrunners in the arcade. Very much like a kid in a candy store, our eyes could not keep still. There was just so much. And even that Darius X burst, using an ultra-wide, three-screen setup. There was plenty of shooters, as well as some cabs with a rotated monitor. If you're into shooters and haven't played a game in Tate mode yet, give one of these games a try in MAME. There's brawlers like Final Fight, and if you look over to the left, even more Tate.
If you ever wanted to get into Mahjong, Final Romance might be a calling. But surprisingly enough, our eyes were more focused on Starblade, a 3D arcade title that uses similar tech to that of a Nintendo 3DS. We found the original Darius arcade game, which uses three CRT displays. The outer two are actually led down and use a mirror to beam the image. And look what we found. Yet another arcade that uses three displays, Ninja Warriors. And there's a second floor. And that housed lines of our favorite arcade games such as Metal Slug X. Then we moved on to one of our favorite games on the Egret 2 Mini. It's Elevator Action Returns, an absolutely fantastic game. And they even had the one title that Don wanted to play the most. We found this game on a Taito Type X, which was a machine that houses multiple games. His favorite being Melty Blood. We actually completed it. The next day, we went to the other Mikado Game Center. This is the same place we visited last year, but this time we met somebody else. I'm with Bruce from Retro Game Corps, and it's mad we finally met. Yeah, yeah, we've known each other for years. I mean, it's been, what, Two, three, three, four years almost? Yeah, it's been a long, 20, long 20, time. Yeah. How are you finding Japan? It's good, you know, I haven't been here in almost 20 years. Like, it's been 18 years since I was here. I love it. This is my first time coming for non-work things. I usually come here for work. Oh, maybe. Well, I used to come and like meet up with ships and stuff. You know, that were stationed here. Okay. Have you ever thrown a bottle at a ship before? <laughs> no, I haven't done that. Why it's not? It's not my job. That's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some places just opened up behind us. Which country had the best food? I really like like Indonesia. Food. Indonesia food. Oh, yeah, like I like got spicy and yeah. just lots of good rice and stuff. What's your favorite video game? Mario favorite one? Too. Mario yes. 2? Yeah, yeah. It's not really, that's Super not the real Mario name though, right? Mario USA. Oh, Mario USA. Okay, I know the one. I thought you were going to say the Iki, Iki Buki Panic. Oh, Doki Doki Panic? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same that. game. That original game is not very fun because, you know, the run button doesn't work on that. You just go, like, there's no B button to run in that game. One game that's overlooked that is hated by others but you absolutely love. Mario Sunshine. It seems like people hate that one. It's so hard. I like that game. I've always liked that game. I don't get very far in it, you know what I mean? But it's just kind of fun, the uh, water mechanics, you know, being able to like slow around. Squirt, yeah, yeah. So I've always liked that one, even though people give it crap. And then also, like, people brag on the Mario tennis games. Yeah, like, the good. Like the Wii U good. one, like, what all of them? They're know. fun. I'm They're a tennis guy. Like, I used to play tennis in high school. So. There you go. All right. Gaming pet peeve. For example, Street Fighter or any fighting game, when you play against yourself. Ken versus Ken. Yeah, yeah. I don't like... Uh, like jumping puzzles where like things are moving and you gotta jump to get to one side. It's really um, tedious to me. Uh, Rockman, Mega Man. Yeah, like those are rough. And then like even just some, some Mario levels, you know, like they're just making it difficult to make it difficult. That's like I want a purpose in life. Favorite arcade game? The Street Fighter game. Street Fighter. Yeah. One, two, three. Uh, I'm Four, still five. a Street Fighter 2 champion edition. Like oh. not too fast, yeah. you know, but still has like the bosses to pick from. Okay. Like, like, well, we're just outside. Game Park, which is in uh, Ikebukuro. Yeah. And uh, should we head in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. The first floor of this arcade had multiple light gun games, and many of the cabinets were different to the last arcade we went to with Don. For example, Tekken World Cup is a football game that uses a trackball and button to kick. There's the legendary Space Harrier, Afterburner Climax, Ghostbusters, alternative styles of UFO Catcher, and F-Zero AX. It was released in 2004 and looks fantastic on this monitor. Believe it or not, this game was actually made by Sega and it ran on the Triforce board, which was co-developed by Namco, Sega, and Nintendo. Here's Dirt Dash by Namco, and this game was featured on Video Game Esoterica's channel a few months back. And in the back, there was a nice selection of classics on Sega's best cabinets. And Typing of the Dead. And yes, there was a second floor, and it was completely packed with machines.
and they even had the best fighting game. And while many of these look like the one-player games, they're actually two machines back-to-back, -back. so for a two-player game, you go down the next aisle and insert a coin. The Basement So this place has three floors, completely jam-packed full of arcades. The Zegret 2 systems, all in good nick, and they even have Dynamite Decker 2. And then finally, we found the ultimate arcade for Russ. <laughs> We had Mario 2. When we got an NES, we, uh... <laughs> That was amazing. Like, it, uh... So many games that I have emulated, and of course I own the original copies, but, uh... Everyone. We, <laughs> every single one. Even Super Mario? Right. But it's so funny to, like, play them in, like, like an arcade, you know? Like, in the real format with CRT, like, television and all that stuff. Amazing. The lines. The yeah, scan lines. scan lines are beautiful. With, with a authentic. All those chunk, chunky pixels. <laughs> like chunky. seeing uh, Sega Rally Championship, you know, mm. or even F Zero. F Zero was only in you know 480p or whatever, but Have it looked you, amazing. Is that the first time you saw it? Then okay. Yeah, it's oh, the first time I've seen that. It was like F Zero RX or AX. Or AX, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. If you was to take one of them games home, what would it be? Probably the Sega Rally Championship. One. I don't e know. Even if it was broke. Well, okay, maybe not. I think maybe the Egret too. Because oh, you can yeah. swap around the. Um, it actually turns out that Russ brought many games home, as that afternoon we passed by a few hard-off stores. We were joined by E.T. Land, a handheld and retro gaming VTuber, and Juntaro, a handheld hardware modder. If you want to see the hard-off tour in detail, they have it all documented in both video and blog form. We'll leave your links down below, and if you have the time, please give them a check. We're out the whole afternoon and got along really well. Before E.T. Land could get a train back home from Ikigaburu we found an arcade called... Gigo. Gigo? Gigo, I guess. Gigo, Gigo, and... We can't agree with the pronunciation. Gigo. <laughs> Russ is here too. Oh, Hi. Wow. Hi. I'm going to work with my phone. Oh. Oh. High tech. So high tech. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Great. So I have five here. Okay. Let's see. Work it. My tactic is to push it to the downwards. I, ouch. Oh. <laughs> but I don't know. Which one are you going for? I want the rabbit. Oh. Do uh, you know his name? Jeff. No. <laughs> is it Hibandi? I don't think I can get it. Oh. 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 It's so flimsy. That, that's a tough one. It's not a very strong claw. Oh. It's so close. Like, it doesn't have any strength at all. Yeah. So rumors say if we can try it 20 times. Oh, I don't think I can get it. Oh, good five, five, five. <laughs> And I'll catch you later. Bye bye! Bye bye! And before we all had to disband, we stopped at round one. Usually, round one has Spotcha, and that provides a full floor of arcade games all on free play. But this one in the Kibiribu Bro has the usual, such as Pericua, UFO Catchers, and many rhythm games. And then the ultimate. If you want to play this game, it's had many ports. There's versions for the PS2, PSP, DS. 3DS, Wii, Wii U, and Switch. And then we finish the night with some Mario Kart. Yeah! 
If you watched this video to the end, thank you. It means a lot to us. If you have any suggestions, please comment down below. We read all the comments and respond to them when we can. Also, thank you to all of our guests, as well as those on Patreon who help with our electricity bills. Here at Team Pandora, we cover things like these, and YouTube recommends you to watch them. I like fish and chips. It's been Amy Chicken of Team Pandora, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!